Now, days after the Delhi Archbishop Anil Kuto claimed that India's secular fabric was under threat, one of India's most prominent Indian Christians, Julio Ribeiro, the super cop who ferociously cracked down on Khalistani extremism during the days of militancy in Punjab, has claimed that India was on the verge he feared of becoming a saffron Pakistan as a Hindu Rashtra. Mr. Ribeiro told a, wrote, to a lead, wrote in a lead, reading daily that he was preparing for second class citizenship, yet maintained that he will not accept being labelled an anti-national. Mr. Ribeiro alleged that the Narendra Modi government was questioning the patriotism of the minorities. And joining me now is uh, Julio Ribeiro himself, the former police commissioner, ex-DGP of uh, Maharashtra and Punjab. Appreciate your joining us, sir. When I read your column in the Times of India, what you said there, it seemed to be mixed with anger and sadness that this was not the India you had grown up in. Explain to us, to our viewers, how you feel today, sir, as a proud Indian citizen. Well... Uh, Rajdeep, I am little apprehensive. You know that these attacks that have taken place over these years on the Muslims, I feel that it is a portent of what things are, will come in to this country if it becomes a Hindu Rashtra. Now, I am not against this government. In fact, I think they have done many good things for the country. And I'm quite sure they intend to do it. But whether they intend to do it for everybody, as they say, or only for 80 percent, I am not sure about that. And that is what really worries me. You know, Mr. Ribeiro, there will be those skeptics who will say today that Mr. Ribeiro is preying on the fears and insecurities of the minority communities, of the Christians in particular. I remember last year you had written a column in the Indian Express where again you had expressed your fear about Christians being persecuted. Now, are these fears at one level exaggerated or is this in some way based on your personal feelings or your experience of talking to people? Well, the Christians in Bombay, in the city I grew up in, they are not bothered too much because they have not felt the effect of this and they are not very political as you know. But I feel that in Delhi, the situation is quite different, that there are a lot of attacks, that had, small attacks that had taken place on churches and schools. Those were, those were then later on proved got to be wrong, over sir. After, after a lot of us wrote and objected and after that the pri prime minister had to intervene so this is uh, a different situation in delhi and uh, in the north of india there is a different uh, atmosphere than what it prevails over here but i can tell you that after i wrote my this article in times of india mm -hmm. many many christians in particular some muslims and uh, some hindus also have got back to me saying that it was very apt and very timely and that you had to say what you said. I can see, I, I can see where you're coming from. I just want to correct uh, you in a way that the church attacks in Delhi were later on found that they were not necessarily related to Hindutva groups. But you've also come to the defense of Archbishop Kuto, who last week stirred a controversy by suggesting that secularism was in danger, Christians needed to pray till the elections of 2019, and he was accused of taking a political position against the Narendra Modi government, effectively suggesting don't vote for Mr. Modi. That's a criticism that may even come your way now, that you say today that it will bring a Hindu Rashtra if you vote for a Modi government in 2019. In some way, do you concede that whatever you say now is being seen as an attack on the Narendra Modi government? Look, uh, Rajdeep, I don't think that what I say or what Archbishop said is going to influence the voters. This is a very small vote. What is this vote going to make any difference to the uh, outcome of the election? It is not. And, but the few Christians I know who had voted for the BJP last time had already changed their mind much earlier to the, let, to the letter uh, issued by the Archbishop. So I don't think that there is a problem about that. It is not going to make any difference. But the, they are very happy that I have articulated what I did. 
You know, I, I, I will quote what you've been, you said recently, uh, Mr. Ribeiro. You said, elections concern us. Therefore, when we talk, we talk about the elections because the government concerns us. We cannot be apart from the government. We pray that we have such government that cares for the freedom of the people, rights and welfare of the Christian community. Somehow you seem to be suggesting that the Modi government has not given enough of sense of security to Christians. Now, the Modi government will say we've rescued Christian priests who were stuck in West Asia and hostage situations, that this is again the, uh, the minority, uh, Mr. Ribeiro playing a victim card that we are reaching out to minorities, it is they who are not responding to us. How do you respond, how will you react to, to, to what the Modi government will say on, uh, on, on their treatment of minorities? Well, there are many people in the Modi government who are very, very fair and, and, and they don't mind, you know, that for example, I have great faith in, in uh, Sushma Swaraj. I have great faith in her. I write to her sometime because I know her from the Punjab days. But I think that she, she is not going to take uh, any umbrage at uh, Christians or Muslims or anything like that. She is a very fair person. So there are very fair people in that in the party. But generally the atmosphere that has changed quite a bit. And, and the, their reluctance to give to raise uh, uh, Je uh, Justice Joseph to the Supreme Court, I think is a clear signal that they are not going to uh, going to have too many Christians in positions where they can make a difference. You know, you in the last paragraph of your letter, sir, use the word anti-national in the sense that you believe that being called anti-national can be the worst form of abuse in a way, particularly someone like you who's fought in a way to save the integrity of this country. Is that what really hurts you at the end of the day? That there are people out there, possibly within even uh, our polit ruling political class, who will label people as anti-national simply for their religious beliefs today. Is that what is really angering and hurting you? Well, you see, there are a lot of these elements in the party who have gone totally out of the woodwork. They have, they have emerged and they do. They think they have the license to, to sort of harass others. And uh, I think that this is a very dangerous trend. And Mr. Modi has the power to stop it. He should not follow them on Twitter when they talk such rubbish against the minorities, particularly the Muslims. At the moment, it is the Muslims, I know, who are the targets. But I think that this should stop because, after all, even if they have not gone in a big way against the Christians, but they can be the next target. That is what I feel. Let me then ask you in conclusion, what is the way forward, uh, Mr. Ribeiro, in your view, to bridge what I believe is the big trust deficit that today exists between minorities, including people like you who feel victimized, and a section of the majority today who will feel that, you know, at the end of the day, this is, these are my, the minorities should not have no reason to feel afraid, but that these they are being politically uh, they are being politically exploited, or dare I say, those who believe that we are indeed at the end of the day a Hindu majority country. How do you bridge this trust deficit? Look, I think that uh, uh, Mr. Modi should should put all those extreme elements under control. Because extremists in any religion, even among the Muslims, there are so many extremists. They, they have to be kept under control. I absolutely agree. But the extremists that exist in the majority community are much more dangerous because the minorities can always be kept under control. They are too, they are too few in numbers. But in, if the majority community has people who go out of control, it is very, going to be very difficult for him to control them. I know it as a police officer. And I think that he should go out of his way to keep the extreme elements in his own party and in his own community under strict control. Mr. Julio Ribeiro, as always, a pleasure and a privilege talking to you, a voice of sanity and uh, appeal for in some way to the conscience of people. Thank you very much for joining me on the news tonight. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share and subscribe to India Today. Also check out our other great videos from our channel, we know you would love to.